The next point, the telencephalon, also called the cerebrum. The telencephalon is the large outer part of the brain, a very deep median groove, the longitudinal fissure separates the right and the left hemisphere from each other. At the bottom of the fissure, the hemispheres are connected by a thick bundle of nerve fibers called the corpus callosum. The cerebral cortex and the basal ganglia belong to the telencephalon. So we have a cortical and a subcortical part of telencephalon. Both cerebral hemispheres are composed of an outer gray matter thrown into folds. We call them gyri. Each cerebral hemisphere is divided into the frontal, the parietal, the occipital, temporal and insular lobe via salt sea and fissures. The central sulcus separates the frontal and the parietal lobe. The lateral cerebral sulcus, also named sylvian fissure, demarcates the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobe. The frontal lobe contains the precentral gyrus, which constitutes the primary motor region of the brain. The part of the frontal lobe that lies in front of the motor areas, called the prefrontal cortex, is involved in making plans for action and movement, anticipation of things that might it will or maybe could happen. Problem solving, regulation, working memory and speech. The parietal lobe receives somatic sensory impulses from the skin, the muscles and the joints and integrates sensory information of different modalities. The occipital lobe is involved with vision. The temporal lobe is involved with hearing, language and memory. Not visible from the surface of the cerebrum is the insular lobe. It can be seen only by separating the frontal and parietal lobes from the temporal lobe. Today the insula is considered as the interoceptive cortex. Here is the place where interoception, that means the processing of bodily stimuli, helps generating feelings, driven by impulses coming from the enter body. The insula is seen as a limbic part of the cortex. What does this mean? The cerebral cortex of the human brain can histologically be subdivided into two major parts, the isocortex and the allocortex. The isocortex, which represents over 90% of the cortex, is characterized by its six-layered structure. It is made of six layers. The allocortex shows a regionally variable laminar pattern. All we see on the surface is isocortex. In order to see the allocortex, we have to look at the medial side of the hemisphere. The here shown allocortex is the core of so named cortical part of limbic system. The insula also has allocortical parts. 
We want to take a look at another two important areas of the allocortex, the amygdala and the hippocampus. First, the amygdala. I think everybody knows this part of the brain. The amygdala has been associated with a variety of functions, including arousal, attention, motivation, various forms of conditioned responses, but also with fear and anxiety. How does the amygdala work? Let me give you an example. If a sound occurs right before something painful happens, the amygdala associates that sound with a painful event. And then that sound will later trigger a protective defense response. So it's creating that what is called the Pavlovian association. That means that the amygdala has a role in fear, but it's not the one that often is described. Its role in fear is more fundamental. Driven by threat detection, the amygdala starts a set of outputs result in the body activation. Heart function, blood pressure, breathing, and secretion of neuromodulators like norepinephrine and hormones such as cortisol. These processes alert the organism. Attention systems in the cortex guide the perceptual search for an explanation for the highly aroused state. The capturing of the environmental stimuli is added by retrieval of memories. If the stimuli are known sources of danger, fear schema are retrieved from memory. Like Joseph Ledoux told us, the feeling of fear results when the outcome of these various processes amygdala and body activation, attention, perception, memory, and all of this come together in consciousness and couple one to feel fear. So it's much more complicated than we usually hear. The next step, the hippocampus. The hippocampus plays a role in the detection of new surroundings, occurrences and stimuli. It is involved in declarative memory, memories that can be stated verbally, such as facts and figures. All the stories of my life that I can tell you are only available because my hippocampus has made them part of my long-term memory. Another very important function of the hippocampus is the inhibition of the stress axis. 